Hello again and welcome to the second video in HPE Aruba Networking's VSG Expanded series covering AOS 8 to 10 migration. In this video, I'm going to explain how AOS 8's familiar concepts translate into AOS 10. I'll also break down the new hierarchy and configuration inheritance of this new cloud-based model. So if you're familiar with the AOS 8 platform, this video is for you. Let's dive right in. When first released, AOS 8 became the new standard for controller-based Wi-Fi deployments. Centralized on-prem management, multi-level hierarchical configuration, and one of the big standouts, headless failover through controller clustering. The familiar hierarchy diagram you see here reflects how we build scalable, repeatable deployments across global enterprises. Each folder level would push down config, global SSIDs, regional NTP servers, site-specific VLANs, all can be inherited from levels above or applied to a specific controller. This hierarchy gave us control and clarity, especially with features like profile reuse and automated firmware upgrades across multiple sites. If you were part of AOS 8 deployments, you know how powerful this model was and still is for on-prem environments. Now let's look at how things have evolved in AOS 10 with HPE Aruba Networking Central. We still have multi-level hierarchy. We still have centralized management. And yes, hitless failover is still there, but now it's all managed from the cloud and expanded to include not just APs and gateways, but switches as well. Now let's walk through inheritance in the new hierarchy. On the left, we have part of the new central configuration UI showing the following. At the top, we have the library, which stores reusable profiles available to be assigned to the scopes listed below. The global scope is where we apply the settings that need to be consistent across the organization. Things like SSIDs, roles, VLAN names, etc. Basically anything that should be inherited by every site. The site collection scope is a logical grouping of multiple sites, such as offices, distribution centers, and retail stores in this example. This helps us apply common policies to a larger set of locations without duplicating work. Under each site collection are individual sites, which represent the actual geographic locations like Chicago, New York, etc. Any configuration unique to a particular office or branch location, like VLAN IDs, local SSIDs, can be defined here. Then we have devices, which are the actual gateways, switches, and APs deployed at each site. Central sees each device, checks its function, and applies the relevant profiles from the hierarchy. If needed, we can customize device-specific settings, such as uplink ports, SVIs, etc. at this level. And finally, devices can be grouped logically, similar to AOS 8 AP groups. For example, in the Chicago site, we have APs grouped into three separate groups to allow for specialized configurations like different RF settings or enabled disabled SSIDs. Altogether, this hierarchy means we can manage thousands of devices across multiple global regions and site types while still allowing enough flexibility to fine-tune per site or even per device if necessary. We go from very broad centralized definitions in global down to site-specific or device-specific overrides. This approach greatly simplifies day-to-day -day administration and maintains a consistent standard across the entire network. This should be a familiar image for existing OSA users. This is an example of a global company named Orange Widget Logistics. The top folder in their mobility conductor hierarchy is named OWL. The next level down contains four regions, then countries, sites named for their respective cities, and the managed devices under each site. Now we'll use Chicago as an example site. This is some of the configuration extracted from the show run output of each controller. It has an office AP group that broadcasts the global SSIDs, a warehouse AP group broadcasting the same, excluding the guest SSID, an outdoor AP group that's broadcasting only the guest SSID for truckers. The SSIDs and three AP groups are inherited from the OWL group at the top level. The radius servers are inherited from the country level, and the rest were configured at the Chicago level. So how would it look if we tried mapping it to New Central? The SSIDs configured at the OWL node in AOS 8 can be configured at the global scope in New Central. 
we can create a site collection named USA and configure the radius servers here. We can create a site named Chicago and configure the VLAN clock and pre-shared key override for OpsNet here. And the AP groups can be configured as device groups and APs can be assigned to each similar to how it's done with AP groups today. Here's another way to look at the same scenario on New Central. We have a global scope. We create four site collections for each of the global regions in AOS 8. We create the sites and move them to their corresponding site collections. Then each site will be assigned the devices installed at their locations. Now, as for the configuration and how it can be applied to Chicago, the SSIDs and other settings configured at the OWL node in AOS 8 can be created at the global level. This will be inherited by the site collections and sites across the organization. Region-specific settings, such as NTP, radius, etc., can be applied at the site collection level. Site-specific settings, such as time zone, VLAN IDs, etc., can be applied at the site level. And finally, any device-specific settings, such as hostname, uplink settings, can be configured at the individual device level. But what about the AP groups? Those can be configured as device groups, and the APs can be assigned to each group similar to an AP group. Now, one more thing in this scenario. We decided to create site collections based on global regions, skipped the country node, and created the sites. This was done because we can't do one-to-one -one mapping between this many AOS 8 nodes and AOS 10 scopes. The decision to carry over the regions versus the countries really depends on how the settings are distributed in the AOS 8 environment. Most should now be familiar with how each node on the left maps to the diagram on the right. In this example, the managed network maps to MD and OWL maps directly to the OWL node on the right. Global regions map to the purple level, countries to the green level, sites to the next level down, and finally controllers to the gray. So if we use this diagram, the first thing we do is kill the global regions and the MD and MM nodes at the top. And now we are ready to see how it applies to the new hierarchical model. And remember that this is an example of one way to do this, to help you visualize the mapping between the two hierarchies. On the left, you can see the scopes from the new central configuration window. And that's it. That's one way to map AOS 8 to AOS 10 with new central. And I already explained how the library at the top is a repository for the different shared profiles applied to the scopes below and device groups can be compared to AP groups in AOS 6 and 8. All right, so we've covered how AOS 8's familiar hierarchy concepts translate into AOS 10 with New Central. If you'd like to learn more, check out the resources linked in the description. And also, don't forget to stay tuned for the next two videos in this series. Thank you for watching.